My name is Tim Eagles. I'm a principal at EDM. We're architects and engineers um, working with this great committee up here and the, uh, your senior center project. Um, I'm going to run through the site design. Chris is going to take you through the building. Um, quite a bit of the development has happened since the last time we were here uh, and presented to you. Um, one of the things that hasn't changed is the location of the senior center um, and the parking that we had shown um, at the previous uh, presentation. Um, but one of the things that has changed is that we've actually um, got the library uh, designer and project manager on board. They've been hired and are starting to work on that project so we were able to do coordination with them uh, to show a unified site as how ultimately the site's going to be developed. So I don't know if anybody remembers what the original presentation that we had shown um, had the building where it's currently located on the east end of the site, uh, parking in the middle, and then we just had a line here and it showed the original um, showed the original current senior center on this end of the site in the original parking. Everybody here? Sorry about that. Um, so, like I said, the, the, the senior center remains on the east end of the site where we currently have it. Um, this will be, and this is the layout that we've received from the library folks, the library architect, um, for the layout of their building. And we've coordinated and met with them several times in terms of how their building wants to work, where their entrance is, and then ultimately how that co-joins the two to make a unified site design between uh, the library and the senior center. So just sorry me a little bit. Um, we're on Russell Street here and Middle Street here. Um, the entry point for uh, the site will be on the south side um, of the library, kind of opposite the way it currently exists today. Um, so you would enter on the south side, and it would be one-way traffic around the site and back out. Or if you're at the library, you could come through here and out. Um, it also will, the circulation will allow um, return back through um, to get back to the front door of the senior center. Um, The entrance to the library is at this location, and the entrance to the senior center is at this location. We've got a pedestrian link connecting those two so people will be able to go back and forth um, between the two. The both buildings for control purposes have a single point of entry, um, which is very important um, for security and knowing who's in the building. In terms of the planning and zoning, uh, requirements or requirements of the planning board here in town. Um, there's two major things um, that are required. One, we need to exceed 20% of the site in green space. In this particular case, as you can see up here, based on the calculations that we've received from our engineers, we're at 26.2% of the parcel will be green space, and that's distributed around on both sides of. Uh, the library through a, a central green space between the parking here, connecting the buildings um, around the east end, uh, and both three sides of the senior center, as well as along the perimeters of the site. Um, so we need, we need code compliance or zoning compliance here in town um, for green space. Uh, the second piece that's uh, critical on the site is the parking requirement. Um, the parking requirement is that you need to have a parked area and pavement. You need to have twice the area of the areas of the building. So in this case, we have an approximately 12,000 square foot uh, library space, approximately 12,000 square foot of senior center space um, for a total of 24,000 square feet of building space. We need twice that for parking. Um, in this particular case, as you can see, um, the total parking area is at 50,000 square feet. 
we need 48,000. So we're 2,000 square feet over what's required. So the site plan is compliant um, with two main pieces of uh, the zoning requirements or the planning board requirements, which is the um, green space and the parking requirements. Um, in terms of total parking spaces right now, on the site we have 104 spaces. Um, that does not include these spaces um, associated with the existing uh, library space. Uh, just the proposed on the site plan that we currently have. Um, we, we have an emergency uh, path that will allow uh, emergency vehicles access um, through the Legion lot here and the connection. Um, the, as presented, uh, the last time we got together here, the thought for overflow parking, which currently exists in this location um, for the um, American Legion, which is located here, um, would be provided anywhere in this lot of 104 spaces, uh, including these five spaces along the edge here. Uh, this whole area that we're developing here will be um, lit. It will be safe to walk. It will be uh, all newly paved. Uh, the idea is that we've got sidewalks leading from the center here. Um, we'll come across the end down here with a crosswalk to be able to connect over and down uh, to the legion. Chris, can you zoom in a little bit on the front end of the... Okay, so the, the, the way the front, front portion of the senior center works is, um, like I said, traffic will come in one in one direction here, um, come around the front of the senior center. This shaded area right here is a drop-off area in front um, to allow safe um, drop-off for seniors at the front. And then there's a large uh, paved um, patio out in front of the senior center. Um, for a breakout from a multi-purpose room, uh, which Chris is going to show you in, in a minute, as well as allow entry uh, to the front door. This whole zone back in here um, is kind of the service area for the building. Um, access to the kitchen. We have a dumpster in an enclosure back here. Um, a couple of uh, <coughs> propane tanks. Uh, generator and some air handling equipment, which would be in this corner of the space. Thanks, Ed. My name is Chris Wanti. I work with Tim. Um, on the design team, the BDM, or the building committee. So I'm just going to run through with you the uh, floor plan, and then I'm going to go to the exterior images, um, go over the exterior design. So as Tim was pointing out, the drop-off spot is roughly right here. There'll be an overhang for um, buses and cars to queue up here along this drop-off end. You'll have a covered walk into the building here in the main vestibule, which will be directly adjacent to the reception desk so we can grab people um, and have total control of people coming in and out of the facility. Um, it'll open up, up to the what we're calling the living room and lounge space, which would just be a large gathering space for a waiting and gathering. Um, there'll be a fireplace and some uh, millwork along here for, for shelving and, and books. Um, directly adjacent to that is the office lane, which has a couple small offices and a little conference room for small meetings. Um, the multi-purpose room here is for the lunches and large gatherings. Um, it's not only set up for senior center use, but at night there's a um, separate entrance off the vestibule so that the rest of the facility can be locked down. People can have access directly from the exterior and um, the space can be used after hours for other community organizations. Um, we'll have access for that after hours um, time slot. We'll have access to the bathrooms here. There'll be gate that can close off this space so the senior center can be completely secured while this space is being used for um, after hour functions. 
You have the um, couple classrooms here, which will act as arts and crafts and other classroom spaces. A lounge in the back here that kind of connects the living room um, with the other end of the building and the other classroom spaces. You have fitness and exercise spaces at the end. There's a companion restroom and a nurse's suite directly adjacent to the activities on spaces um, to service those areas and a uh, kitchen off the side of the kitchen, off the uh, multi-purpose room here um, for serving lunches. The canopy room and the kitchen are off the back end of the building, so for ease of, um, ease of uh, drop off and other maintenance um, that needs to happen. So that's a quick overview of the exterior, or the interior, sorry. The exterior, So the exterior, we really wanted to focus on trying to fit the uh, architecture of the, of the building within the context of the site and the town as a whole. So um, if you walk around town, you'll see a lot of brick and clapboard buildings. Um, so that's really what we wanted to focus on here. So the main um, materials on the building are um, clapboard siding with some accent shingles um, along some of the gables and a uh, CNC metal roof. Um, again, trying to mimic some of the uh, local architecture here in the town center. Um, the, if you go to the bird's eye view, you can just kind of zip through the rest of yeah. So this kind of shows the, the major forms of the building. Um, the main or organizing principle here is this large gable here, which as I was showing previously, it houses the, the living room here and the dining room on the south side of the building. Um, it acts as a link between the activity spaces, which is housed in the back here, and the office spaces here. Um, as you can see, it, it, it mimics kind of traditional forms with, it, with large and small gables, um, trying to keep it within the scale of the, of the, neighbor, the neighboring communities. Um, so, standing seam metal roof was chosen um, by the architects and the building committee. Um, with durability in mind, longevity, we want to make sure that the material lasts a long time, um, but also for future installation of solar panels. Um, the roof structurally will be sized to accept solar panels, and standing seam roofs lend themselves nicely to easily clip uh, solar panels to it uh, in the future. Um, windows are going to be um, fiberglass windows, energy efficient, they'll be um, simulated simulated divided lights, which will look like traditional double long windows. Um, and there's some there's a little bit of accents kind of around the building, some strong base, um, some paneling to again just try to mimic the, some of the local architecture. Um, that's pretty much it for uh, the exterior. I'll pass it back off to, uh, to Jerry. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we can sit back through. So again, this is the front. This is the, the large porch area here. This is the main drop-off. This is the office wing. Um, we have a couple of dormers here that bring natural light into the dining room and also into the center of the lounge area. Um, there'll be a little bit of a patio space up here, which is still being developed. Um, this is the office one again, if you swing around the northwest side of the building. This is large uh, windows looking into the uh, lounge living room area, and then going back into the uh, classroom spaces, they're just punch openings that kind of march along the, the back side of the building. Another dormer here in the back, and large glass that brings more daylight into that back lounge area. Um, and then again, more, more activity spaces here, um, just simple punch openings. Again, the, the horizontal siding with some um, shingle style accents. We have some cupolas here. Again, trying to make some of the local architecture. These will be um, more mechanical in nature. There will be some vents up here. But um, again, just to break, break down the scale of this large um, gable uh, fence. So you can see kind of the, the punch openings that I was talking about. We have a large um, glass corner to the exercise room again. It's all about bringing natural daylight into the space. Um, this corner is where the kitchen and the mechanical space are. Again, easy access for uh, maintenance and for drop-offs for the kitchen space. And then off the uh, south side is the uh, large 
cable band and wire substantial windows for the uh, multi-purpose room. And this is just another bird's eye view of the uh, southwest side of the building. Again, the large organizing gable for the dining room and the um, uh, living room space. Northwest, Northwest side, sorry. So this building will be um, fully air conditioned. Um, there will be a generator off to the back that will, this facility could be used as a heating center um, in the event of an emergency. Um, and cooling center for summer activities as well. In case anybody doesn't have air conditioning, this building will be fully air conditioned. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, and again, thanks everybody for coming this evening. I'm sure we have some questions. If you'd like to step up, we have the people here to answer the questions for you. Jim Maxwellowski, 1201 Drive. Planning board, but I have, there will be no planning board opinions tonight because they haven't applied. Just some general comments for you guys. One of them is, you mentioned planning board siding. What is that? Is that going to be required painting? Yeah. Okay. I'm very disappointed that this building is being built with long-term maintenance being, with maintenance being required on the outside. The town does not have a good history of painting the buildings. And in 40 years, this will look like the North Avenue Hall. Um, 20 years, I think, is what they said this is going to require painting. And for whatever reason, it should be vinyl siding, but just a comment on that. Um, they made very good, talked to a lot of contractors on this about the vinyl siding, and every one of them has said there's excellent vinyl siding for business like buildings. I don't know why we're putting up high siding that requires maintenance continually. 20 years from now, it will easily cost a half a million dollars to paint this building, considering uh, prevailing wage and stuff. Standing metal seam roof, what exactly is this? What exactly is standing metal seam are you talking about? There's a lot of buildings that are called, a lot of metal roofs are called standing metal seam. Is this the one with the bridge that's going to be sealed? It's, it looks like the roof on the town hall. It'll be a folded and the scene has to be sealed, right? Okay. There's that one more thing you're talking about. That's all. A lot of buildings are called standing metal scene, and there's an overlap. There's the ones that are sealed, et cetera. This one's the one's going to be sealed on the, on the top ridge. Every, yes. whatever, it's three or four feet. So this, the standing metal roof that we're looking at is the one um, as recommended by your public building um, the same one that's been used in town elsewhere, so we've gotten the specifications directly from that's 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 right. The, uh, the you mentioned that there's going to be the outside equipment, yeah, um, generator, AC equipment, and I'm assuming stuff for the kitchen for the refrigerator and stuff. Yeah, we have. A, yeah, so we'll be a condenser okay. for the refrigerator. So oh, just be aware, there's a lot of residences very nearby. So noise has to be virtually zero escaping from these equip the outside equipment when it runs, okay. including the generator. Okay. Okay, so that's all I have to Thank you. Hey, it's just Max Nosky. Um, the building committee is here. What was the standing seam material that was, was there a spec that you used for the standing seam already? And what was the material that we used? What can we expect? And do you have any input regarding the side and the seam? Um, and we're going to make it. Tim Nyhart, building commissioner, and also on the on menace of the building committee. I heard you be fine. Just speak up. We can. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> the, Every single one of our buildings has the same exact material on it. It's a very specific, very high quality 
standing seam. It is a 50 year warranty product. Uh, so we don't even have to touch it for 50 years minimum. Uh, I don't specifically know the brand name the manufacturers right now, uh, but uh, it is a local firm that uh, is in this area that has done quite a number of very successful projects. Uh, so we, we've asked the, com the, the committees for both the library and the senior center to use the same exact material. And the great thing about that is we'll have that product here. And if anything happens, we'll be able to fix it very quickly and very efficiently. Again, it's, uh, it is a uh, crypt over system. It's, it's very uh, well sealed. It's got a double layer of a crimp to it. And it is a very good system for solar applications because they have uh, the special clamps that are clamped down right onto it. You're not putting holes into the entire roof system by putting a whole solar system in, which uh, unfortunately a lot of people with residential and shingles would have to do. There is no easy way of attaching the, um, the, the solar panels onto a, uh, asphalt shingles without putting a screw through it. So, but the nice thing about the standing seam is since it sticks up, they can clamp right over it without any penetration whatsoever. Good system. And the siding? And the siding? The siding uh, that they're recommending is a bore, what's called a boral uh, material. It's a, very, it's a brand new type of uh, product that uh, is, uh, is extremely hardy. Uh, it's the next generation of the sidings that are coming out other than wood. The great thing about it is it does have a 20 year lifespan on the uh, paint. It doesn't chip, it does, doesn't flake. What it does over time, just like vinyl siding would, it, it fades. So when the time comes to paint it, you don't have to scrape it. You power wash it, prime it, and put another coating on it. So the cost to do um, uh, repainting is a lot cheaper than what we're seeing with our, our buildings right now. It's a very, very good product. And the good thing about it is uh, why it's, uh, a lot of people are starting to use it, both residential and commercial, it's because it actually has a, um, a type of uh, uh, bevel to it and a, a system of, um, of overlap that the other systems never had, which everybody knew about hardy planks and things like that, uh, which is a cement board. This is the next product. It's a very good product, and I think it's going to be a worthwhile product. Uh, if you look at vinyl, you look at this, they're both indestructible types of products. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Mary Moranich, and you know, I'm interested in American Legion because my business is. I have a couple of questions. On the first presentation, you said um, there's an emergency exit and entrance. Is that going to be paid on your first one? If you go to the first one, please. Yeah, this, this is the first one. No, the, the next one. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you said there's an entrance from Route 9. Is it going to be paid? Yes. You have the. So anybody can go in there. It's not just an emergency. Yeah, the one thing that it was interesting when we first started planning the project, um, because of the right of the way here, we as architects were excited about having accessibility and visibility off Route 9. The first thing that we were told by uh, Suzanne and the whole committee was seniors will not use Route 9. 
a dynamic command in OS or through to try to get out with no light on Route 9, that everybody's going to come back out here um, and go through the light to get out of Route 9. Understand. Thank you. Um, now, you also mentioned there will be a dumpster there, there will be delivery trucks, right? And there's going to be a propane tanks. So, do you think your delivery trucks going to go there? No, we'll have the delivery through this this location. The, the, the whole idea from the senior center in the town is that all access, including during construction, except when we're putting utilities in, um, from Russell Street here, all of that will happen um, off now. Okay. So no, now, when you say there's the propane tanks, dumpster, and all that, are those is going to be on the overflow pla place in uh, American Region? Currently, right now, the overflow is on this site plan will be in this location. So it's it's under what we're currently showing as building here. And it's in, yeah, it's in this whole region. So we're going to have their buses, uh, delivery trucks, and the garbage when they're coming for their dumpster and everything in the overflow. Am I understand correctly? It's, it's in that location of the overflow currently, yes. Right. There, when, when we're done with the project, the overflow for the Legion will be the town parking elsewhere on the site, not in its current location. Because the building's going to be in its current location. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, Annie Moore Street and 45 Roosevelt Street. It looks like, oh, I have two questions. It looks like the largest area of green space is behind the senior center with no way to access it. Uh, no sidewalk or path or door or any way to get there. The, the, so the, we originally had talked about running a sidewalk through this side, and we've gone back and forth with the building committee on that. Because this essentially becomes a utility yard out on the corner here, the thought was that we didn't want, or at one point we talked about trying to put a sidewalk loop around the building, but with, with what ended up, you know, we needed space around the building somewhere to put propane tanks and those things, and the, once again, we're gonna have service delivery here, so the thought was to um, not have the sidewalk go to that area. There's also a wetlands. Right, and we needed to maintain along the edge. We've got wetlands that are back in here and a side yard setback, um, or rear yard setback that we needed to maintain um, as far as where the building is located on that side. <coughs> it just seems like that's 20% of the green space in the site and it's not accessible. Um, the second thing is um, uh, I plan in the future to run my bicycle to the senior center. Is there any plans for any bicycle infrastructure, bike paths, lanes in the parking lot, or places for bike racks? There will be bike racks and places for bikes. We haven't gotten that far in the development yet of the site plan. Um, in terms of actual has the right around. Um, well, within, within the parking lot, so you can ride in the parking lot safely. We don't currently, because we're double-loaded parking, I don't think there's a way to do that, um, you know, with the, as far as creating a bike lane through a double-loaded parking lot. I'm not really sure how we could accomplish that. Oh, uh, one, one other question. I don't know if you can answer this. The sidewalk around the library, does it extend all the way down to Mid Street or does it does it end somewhere? So it will be possible to walk to both facilities yes. on the sidewalk. Yes. Yes, well this this 
extend these this side lot and this side lot, which extends all the way through to the senior center will both go out to Meadow Street and the existing sidewalk that's out there. southern boundary and eastern boundary are all private property uh, the west boundary is a road my question is being so difficult with the thing in the middle how are you going to handle snow removal or are you planning to haul it out of the site Gary Bird um, has been part of our committee, and Gary's title is, what's Gary's title? With the DPW. With the DPW, Gary's been part of um, Design and Development Committee for the Senior Center, has been an integral part of discussions on uh, snow removal, exactly what his plan is. I'm not really sure. I know we talked about, um, you know, that there's room on the edges for snow, um, exact, you know, and we've created pockets on corners uh, to be able to put snow. Uh, whether or not at certain times of the year if we get a heavy snow that they're going to have to take it off site, I'm not sure, but um, he's definitely been a proponent of what we're doing in terms of curbs and wheel stops and how many islands we have and, you know, really thinking about the snow removal. for Sunrise Drive, also a member of the planning board. Why? Why now is this demonstration and this exhibit is here now, not before the town meeting was called to vote on this? Phil Colombo told the town moderator that this project was going to be an $8 million project. He also said to me it's $7 million. On that town meeting, they come in with a $5.3 million, knowing that this wasn't going to work. I asked the fact, why this building has to sit? Who picked the site of it? And I was told it's a safety reason. Okay, if it's a safety reason, where's the safety engineer in his report? 
Well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a safety complex. I went to the police department. I asked for the safety officer of the day. He said, what's that? We don't have one of those. Well, next thing we talked to the uh, police chief. What did you have to do with safety in this building? And the, the deputy chief, not deputy, but the assistant to him said, I had the plan that what was turned to the planning board. He said, I never see this plan before this day. This whole project was so flawed from the start. We got a window memorial uh, library, which I applaud the library trustees and the maintenance team. They did a wonderful job, and they do a wonderful job. The park in there, where is that going to go? They're going to re repurpose that building for municipal uses. Where are they going to park? Route 9, Route 47. They stole the parking for there. They're going to use it for the new library. They took this building, and I asked twice, flip it, put it over here, so it doesn't create big impact to American Legion. The Legion is our veterans. I've been on the road now for four weeks. There is elderly people. People tell me those veterans are nothing but drunks. I was appalled to that. And it shouldn't be there. This is the we're going to. Curtail that. No, I, don't, I don't want you here to say as to what people were telling you on the road, so please. I don't want to ask about this. You have some questions. We're happy you know, to ask the questions. You're on the like committee. Like you're an ask asshole. If you would like a question, we're happy to ask a question. What's the question? Who put that building in that spot? When you asked about the safety issue, you talked to the police chief. He was sitting in the office and he said, one entrance to a building as they have in Hopkins, as they have in the elementary school, as they have in the safety complex, is the way the world is going because of the unfortunate things that are happening. And having one entrance that can be monitored is the way it should go. In order to do that and share a space with the library and make a town community center, which is what has been requested from way back with the various reports that have been done in the town. You, to make a community center, you put a space between the buildings. You don't put them next to each other. Well, I think that's wrong, Jane, because the only thing I got, I asked for it in writing, was a letter from the police chief. The only advice that he gave to you and your committee was about cameras and the safety of the cameras. That's all he put. I asked the same thing for the fire chief. And the fire chief, you know, he didn't put together his statement yet. But what came out at, at the annual town meeting, and I, no, that was a 10-27-16 uh, meeting, was there was no cost of it. There was a caught figure that pulled out of the sky. There was no plans on it. There was nothing there. There were empty promises, empty statements, and false statements. <laughs> This same architect was just hired by the town of uh, Southampton. Uh, South They're doing their forms, everything, before the vote, not after the vote. You guys cheated the taxpayers. You fooled the check taxpayers. You didn't fool this taxpayer. I'm on it. And I don't like what I see. I don't like the players, what they're doing. And that's totally uncalled for. Is there anybody else has any information for us this evening? I'm here because I promised Jane I'd come. A lot of you know because I came from standing out in front of the parade. And so I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of thinking about the parade and what happens. And it's, it's all good. I think this is the right place for the senior center. I think things are going to be different. We're still going to have a parade. We're still going to have a parade that starts the Legion with a ceremony. It's going to be different. Where we line people up and how we feed it together is going to change. I can tell you I've got a plan A 
and I've got a plan B. But I can't tell you we're going to have a parade. So I didn't want that to become a big area of concern. I knew back at town meeting, when we're voting for the senior center, I was putting up my hand to voting for the senior center, knowing that the places I was going to be loading my wagons was going to be gone. But the senior center is in the right place. I am very disappointed with this uh, uh, arrangement that the senior center has provided. Uh, look how spread and strong out it is. And next thing is, why are it, uh, they overflowed into the Legion? Uh, the Legion has nothing to do with the, the uh, uh, library and the uh, senior center building. But the, they're having service uh, uh, the vehicles riding over uh, our uh, uh, parking lot, why? And then again, uh, 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 look at the, uh, oh, at the uh, last forum uh, we had, and which uh, say, let's have a, uh, uh, do, uh, should we have a rectangular building? Everybody was chanted rectangular, rectangular, rectangular. What do, we, what do we have? We have this sprawled out, uh, uh, very expensive and, uh, to, uh, to upkeep and to build, and what do you have there? Nothing. In other words, uh, Tim and I had called the uh, Homer School of Dump. I'll call this a, a stupid building. And what do you have? Why can't we have a rectangular building? And push it over to uh, beyond the, uh, the pavement and use the pavement which uh, is uh, there now as for parking for both the senior center and also uh, the uh, region. And the next thing is, uh, why do we have to have this roll off building with 15 jobs? Expensive. What's it all amount to? And look at all your overhangs. You've got your uh, door entrance on the west side. Uh, that whenever the west breeze, uh, breeze comes through, you know, uh, uh, cool off the whole uh, building. Next day you have a uh, 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 opening on the uh, uh, north east end. What's it for? For all the trash to, uh, to uh, assembly from the uh, north wind? I don't know. What, what are you accomplishing? Are the people getting their money's worth? I paid the taxes since uh, 1959 and still paying them. And, uh, and then again, should I ask uh, 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 Jay, uh, when uh, you were the, uh, uh, in charge, uh, well, the young lady was on the uh, on the extended sick leave, we had a beautiful rectangular building. What happened? You, as a highly taxpayer, have to give in to somebody that's out of town now? You should be ashamed of yourself. And what do you have? A stupid building instead? Push the, uh, the, uh, the rectangular building over to, uh, off the pavement, and then we'll probably have to. Matter of fact, uh, a couple years ago, the selectmen uh, asked for uh, building lots. Uh, two two uh, uh, propositions came in. Matter of fact, at the opening, they couldn't find one. It was misplaced. Why? Was it delivered? The building committee didn't want the build, that, that, uh, that building lot. And, uh, uh, matter of fact, it seems as though you are so dense crowded uh, right now, you had a chance to buy the uh, Tom Bacula's property, you had the uh, chance to buy uh, uh, Frank Bice's property. Everything will be centralized for the town of Paddy. It will be a beautiful piece of property. Now, what do you have? 
cramping everybody in together. That happened. Uh, 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 the legion uh, going into excess probably had to uh, hire or in order to uh, protect their, their, their belongings. You people should be ashamed of yourself. Why? And uh, I got the uh, planning board with a very good deed uh, about a month ago. He said, leave the, the legion alone. And are they? This is very difficult to speak about, but I'm going back 22 years ago, and I envisioned the same thing happen all over again. I look at this room. 50% is for consul on aging. 50% is against the consul on aging. The school, it's our greatest asset today we have in this town. It keeps our property up and values. It's the best building this town ever built. My question is, is there any consideration by the committee to change the site to the nine and a half acres we have in North Hadley and all of this would disappear? first about this What's your drawing. I don't live in Hanley. Um, the the do dotted line that is your right of way on that map, what is that space to the left of the dotted line? That's parking. So normally, uh, will there be parking there? Uh, I mean, it looks like the size of cars will be able to fit in there and still leave that space open. Yes, the idea is that this is the existing parking at this end of the site. So the connection through um, for the emergency access would be outdoor of that. So there's room here to park just like there currently is. And from about halfway through the senior center over to the right is what's now considered overflow parking for the Legion? That exists in this location, yes. And so the whole overflow parking area, it would be gone? Yes. This would, it, it's relocated to this location here. So the, the question I brought up previously, um, and I'm still wondering about, is if this is enough parking uh, that's demanded for those two sites, it, there's nothing demanded for the Legion. So if something were, you know, they ask you for that certain amount of parking per site in case there's an event happening at both sites, I assume. So if there's something happening at all three sites, is there a solution? activities with community organizations. Um, we have a list of them. 
Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Alan, AA, um, PB, um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, RSVP of Hampshire County, um, Happy Democratic Caucus, um, the Happy Robotics Team, um, Ladybugs, Cultural Council, things like that. Um, they all have to schedule with me for off on the planning board, and they each have, you know, they check in when they need space for something, and I can say that's not, that night isn't available, the parking lot's going to be full, but I do have this Saturday other night, and we make it work. Um, Comscom is meeting there this coming Tuesday night because they were booked for their usual place. Um, it's a, you know, if we're all going to be in the same vicinity, we have to learn to work together. And picking up a phone and making a request is, is the way it should be. Um, so, you know, we didn't set out to create a conflict. In fact, when we set out to build this community campus, we didn't forget the Legion. We said we need to be able to offer them, you know, some solution close to what they had. Um, so, you know, a, a year ago, we had already said, okay, they have an alternate schedule than we do. Um, they open at 3.30, we close at 4. We're closed on the weekends. It shouldn't be difficult to work together and my greatest sorrow out of all of this is that it only takes a few to create a big divide when just communication should be the natural way if you're a community. We're happy to do that. We've said that from the get-go. And I'm really not seeing what the conflict is. This was the parcel of land that the senior center was on. The Council on Aging, when they thought about going for a warrant article, we're, they were emphatic about saying, we're not going to do it if we have to go out and buy more land. There's land in back of the senior center already, that way the library can have their space, we can have our space, and the Legion was considered in that. We've tried to meet and, and rectify that. I'm sorry that, um, uh, you know, for as much as I'm hearing, they use overflow parking, I would think, on a weekend or um, after we're gone. It should be it should be acceptable, we're hoping. We're, we've thrown out that olive branch, but to change um, what we've been told by the professionals who have designed this and looked at it, we're not going to put seniors at risk by moving a building which would create safety issues within the building, safety issues driving off of Route 9 into the building, um, going through their parking lot, which we're trying to maintain as their parking lot, and, um, and it would cost expensive amounts of money to do so. It's not worth risking all of those factors um, to create a parking lot that quite frankly, is dangerous with all of that equipment that's out there and people we can't monitor. We want you to utilize our over, your overflow parking in our new lot. It's lit. We've put sidewalks in for you. Let's work together. Let's make it work. Let's, let's do this as a community. I certainly support all of those organizations. My only concern is knowing that there are events at the Legion every weekend. Uh, for example, on a Friday night with 100 people or, or more, who have, and some of whom are seniors as well. And on some weekends, uh, there are events there that are for seniors um, that 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 parking hasn't gone to such a distance. And the other question I have that is a concern is the coordination because, you know, say the senior center call, I mean the Legion called and said, we have something here every Friday night and we need 
60 parking places <laughs> or 40 parking places there because their lot is fairly small um, every Friday night. I mean, it's hard, it would be hard for you, for you in the library to say, sure, we'll reserve those spaces for you. You know, the coordination of it, I think, could be problematic because there are three separate, separate organizations who will be sponsoring their own equally valid but uh, conflicting events. So obviously, um, with the growing community spirit and everybody having new um, events happening, you definitely need to be communicating one way or the other. Um, and no, we can't always promise that if your event got so big that, um, you know, we're not there on the weekend, so ours is not an issue. But if it's a Friday night... Friday night already exists. Okay. So if it's a Friday night, I mean, um, and I can tell you right now, according to our calendar, we don't have anything happening on Friday night. If, if you know, in the future that changes, then, you know, maybe we look at, um, I mean, what have they been doing when it was all snow and they couldn't park out in the thing before? Where did they, what other, that's part of what has gotten people worried because when there were uh, vehicles parked back there when the road work was being done, uh -huh. there were people desperately looking for places to park and there were people, you know, walking across Route 9 with no lights at night and no crosswalks uh -huh. and it was hard, even with the very temporary help of a couple of neighboring businesses. Okay. And um, it was dangerous. And the, these, the events that were happening were hurt by that. But then we saw there was nothing that could be done about that. But this is a regular thing that's being planned on. So it would perhaps make people feel better if there were some you know, assurances that they could. But it's hard for you to I understand. You can't make assurances. Who gets priority? You know, so. That's, that's what I'm saying is a, is a problem, and um, uh, I've drove, driven by the Legion many times and seen barbecues or this or that going on at all, all different times. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking that perhaps what needs to happen is some kind of formal coordination plan mm -hmm. that, that respects everybody's needs. And I don't have a solution for how to do that, though. <laughs> so, you know, just brainstorming, which is always a good thing to do because it increases um, the odds of coming up with an answer that solves um, many questions for many people, is maybe we have a master calendar um, between the library, us, and you for all of the events that, we, that you anticipate requiring not only filling your lot. I mean, you know, one thing that would certainly help is if um, the lower Legion parking lot got lined appropriately um, because it's, sometimes it's kind of spread out a little bit so you could maybe maximize that. But also on another um, way, if we had a calendar for every month and what was going on, I'm not going to schedule one of my big events on a night where I know you have a big event going on and the library can, you know, we do that on a computer all the time where you can pick up the phone. I don't see that as insurmountable, and I'm happy to work with everyone. Well, that's a good start. I hope some, I don't have, you know, I hope some people from the Legion who know more about this than I do will have something to say. Richard will go 28 tomorrow road. Uh, I've never seen a site plan before this evening. And that's what I used to do for a living, for Carl site work in Northeast. Now, I have no issues with the plan except for a service area that runs through the uh, Legion parking lot. <laughs> that should be a living. It should be all service from business. And more important, I see no drainage plan. And I understand very well, I know geography, 
There is a drainage ditch to the east of that property. However, there is a pipe that goes underneath the Legion parking lot and goes all the way, halfway to uh, Bay Road. Here it comes, an open ditch. Now that, the size of that pipe is, I would say about two to three feet diameter. And in the springtime, it backs up way beyond Wines' property, all the way to uh, the next tree over. Uh, has the architect is taking this into consideration? Drainage. All that would need to go through the planning board as well, right, gentlemen? Black top and roof is a lot of encouragement. Yeah. You think yeah. they, they, the drainage will go through the planning board to review all the rest of the stuff? And under the new MS4 requirements, there's a whole new set of circumstances required by this for the drainage. What happens if that pipe is big enough? That goes on any through nine. I can't comment on that because I haven't yes, seen it. Yes, it does. I know. I haven't seen I'm the very well plan. Aware. The planning board has not seen any of this stuff yet. We have no comment on it, like I said at the beginning of the meeting. But they will comply with the new MS4. The grade goes from uh, Rocky Hill Road south. And all the water from there down goes underneath Route 9 at that point. I don't think this is taken into consideration. <laughs> so uh, the in terms of the site drainage, exactly. what's, what's required by state law and what we're going to have to present to the planning board is that all site um, water needs to be uh, treated locally on the site. So for the um, for the parking lots and the roof drain is it's all going to go into a subsurface infiltration system and that sheet flow off the site. Uh, listen, I, I've done that for a living and most of that subsurface drainage off does, rarely works. The only thing that works is an open ditch or a pipe heading down toward the river which is generally from Rocky Hill Road all the way to Bay Road it is a gradual grade and that's the way it goes now. But in the springtime, when we get heavy rains and melt off, it backs up all the way to Newton Lane. So again, and all right, the well, we got ground water and the water table is high at that point. Anything you put it like a dry well in or for a community, they don't work. The planning board Richard will have all that in front of them for them to review and sign off on it. If they don't sign off on it, they don't sign off on it. And I think that would be the place to negotiate or to, to have this conversation. Well, I certainly hope uh, the planning board is going to take that into consideration. They're not. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not your head. <laughs> The drainage system will comply with the engineers and with MS, the new MS4, like I said. Yeah, they're going to put drywall in it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Forget it. As long as the architect got that in mind. I asked before about safety, and I'm going to ask you as an architect. What makes that building safe there, and does it make it safe if it flipped over there? And specifically, what are the safety rules problems or results of something why why are you saying it's safe there and not safe here so so we work with a uh, senior center design consultant who has been in the town multiple times uh working with the building committee where is and, he pardon? where is he where is he right now yeah i don't know what did you bring there because that, that's, that's a main issue of the No, but I just thought of what their view was. And, uh, so the, the, the main issue is single point of entry into the building. So if we were to move, if we were to move this building in this direction, put a part of the parking here, a part of the parking here, um, not long we're going to end up with less parking on the site because it's more efficient to put all the parking together. And it's, and it's, and as people have pointed out, it's a very tight site that we're dealing with. So right now we have 104 spots. It, it would definitely go down if we were to split the parking. The second piece is if we were to push the building into the center or somewhere over here and have some of the parking on this side 
some of the parking on that side, it would require for the seniors to be able to have access as close as possible to the entry points of the building. We end up with two entries to the building, one on the east end of the building and one on the west end of the building. And that's from both a safety issue as far as who's in the building and the senior center staff to be able to monitor who's in the building as well as um, just overall control of the building uh, and the access from the seniors parking to the front door of the building, um, that's not advisable to have more than one main entrance to the building. All right. <clears throat> the building's there and the parking's here. Put the building there and the parking there and you get one entrance. So we can't, so, so if we were to put all the parking down at the center of the site, right. number one, there's going to be no parking for the library. You're going to have to walk all the way around to get to the library besides these parking spots oh, here. Stop. The library has to have its own parking. You're saying to me you're going to share a parking now? Is that what you're saying to me? The, the, these 104 spots are, yeah, shared between these two buildings. There's no line drawn out here that says if you're at the senior center, you can't park here, or it's none of these are possibly signed specifically library only, senior center only. There's going to be 104 spots out there that anybody can use. If the library has a large event, they can park into this area. If the senior center has a large event, they can come into this side of the city. Oh, is that so? Yes. Uh, I still don't get why you can't put the building there, put the parking in the back, and then the Legion can use that. They don't have to walk. It's the same as what's going on here. And far as what the gentleman before me said about the drainage, you're the architect. You should be concerned with it. And also you should be concerned. All those houses that abut that and that are off Route 9, they're all uh, uh, stone foundations. You're going to put all this underground. That <coughs> water table is at 15 feet. When you dispense all that water from those buildings, from the parking lot, under water, and then the overflow will either go to the state, but I don't think so. I don't think the state of the MS4 will allow any overflows into a state uh, drainage. If all those houses over there, now, after you're all done and set here, have water to the abutting properties, you guys, are not you, you get your money, you run, but the town is going to be held liable for that. So, so, you think? so right now, we have a site that's 120,000 square feet. Right. Water falls on the site from the ground, from the air. Falls on the, like, falls on the 120,000 square feet. But where does it go? It absorbs. It absorbs into the ground. So we're, the system that will be designed it will infiltrate into the ground no differently. No, you're changing the direction because the water is not dispensed all over the grass. You're going to dispense it into these underground chambers. Right. Right? That then they're going to, they're going to take the easiest route. Right? Just, just Correct. Like currently does. No, because there's no building there now. So it's not going to be currently like it is now. And you could cause all those buildings to the south and to the north, the abutters, water in the south in the future by doing this. And you still can't prove to me or anybody else that this, could, whether they said the police, the police didn't even look, the police only said about cameras, who they could pick, they give three people for security cameras. That's what the security system, buildings have doors all over. They have security, they have automatic locks. It's modern age, in case you don't know. So don't tell me about a door that's a security. The hospitals, everything but security. And, and again, everything you're doing here is after the fact. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Hey, and ways and uh, and everything is a secret on, under the table. Now, of course, the lady spoke uh, about the let's get along. Well, of course, they got the senior center uh, uh, participant, and they are all uh, brainwashed, 
and who are they going to vote for? So where is the Legion? Off to the sideline. Why not, don't you uh, uh, present a building which is uh, presentable? And a rectangular building. Instead of that, you have almost overhang. What does it amount to? You've got a, uh, a sidewalk leading off, way off to the uh, uh, east end. Where is it going? Uh, that space could be used for uh, a green or also parking. And the, uh, like the lady said, let's get along. Uh, well, isn't it wonderful? She can say it, but uh, it seems as though she's uh, uh, talking out of both sides of her mouth. Thank you. But why can't we get along? Let's do it right. Uh, move the building over and uh, let's have a rectangle right building. Anybody else would like to offer Just a quick question. Um, you're talking about walking from the parking lot to the Legion. There's no walk there. Can there be one? I'm sorry. So currently there's the walk, the walkways in between. Um, to, get, to gather people on either side of the trees in the green space here. There's a crosswalk here to the front, which goes to the sidewalk that comes down and then arrives at the uh, oh, Legion Park. Oh, it's related to the lot. It's not over that way. So. When's our next forum? Or is it going to be haste and waste and uh, do a Thank you, sir. under the table? Just a uh, uh, note of comment. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Michalski heard that, that, uh, that there's not a lot of respect for our American Legion. That's not what I hear at all. There's a lot of respect for our American Legion. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We appreciate your input. I'm sure some of the will work its way into the thing. I know we have some. Uh,